everyone, I'm Emily, and thanks for joining us this week on Forbes Flash. Congratulations goes out to Tencent Chairman Ma Huateng, who briefly became the wealthiest person in Asia this week. His time at the top was short, as Alibaba's Jack Ma reclaimed the spot shortly thereafter. The two went back and forth for the top spot thanks to stock prices, so it's hard to say who will stay number one moving forward. Now for the three news stories you need to know from this past week. We launched our list of the world's most innovative companies this week. The big names at the top probably won't surprise you. Salesforce, Tesla, and Amazon took the top three spots, with familiar faces like Netflix and Adobe not too far behind. Google fired the engineer who wrote a 10-page memo questioning women's ability to succeed in certain tech jobs. The story has been all over the internet this week and doesn't look to be quieting down anytime soon, so stay tuned. You can't avoid it on the radio, and now summer's biggest hit has a new record to brag about. This week, Despacito, Despacito. became the first video to ever hit 3 million views on YouTube. North Korea has accelerated the timeline for its missile development, leading President Trump to warn that further threats will be met with fire and fury. In a saga that will undoubtedly continue, analysts are weighing in from around the world. Find these insights and more by following Forbes Asia. Look out Netflix, there's a new streaming service poised and ready to take over. Disney announced this week that it will launch its own streaming platform in 2019. This means the end of Disney's distribution agreement with Netflix, meaning new flicks like Toy Story 4 and the Frozen sequel will be streamed onto Disney's own platform. Only time will tell if the world's largest entertainment company has what it takes to compete in the streaming world. All right, everybody, I am here joined by Zach O'Malley Greenberg, Forbes Senior Editor of Media Entertainment, and he is going to talk about the list that was launched this week, the world's highest paid DJs. So who ended up on the list? That's right. Uh, so the list ended up being Calvin Harris, as usual, number one, 48 and a half million, uh, followed by Tiesto at 39 million, Chainsmokers close third, 38 million, uh, goes all the way down to Zed, number 10, uh, about 19 million. So, you know, these guys are still earning a ton of money. Uh, the top 10 earned more than they earned last year, uh, like, a little bit more. You know, it's not skyrocketing like it was in the past. Uh, so I think that the total compensation for DJs is maybe plateauing it's a little bit. Down, yeah. But it's not, you know, so it's not going, it's not like the J-curve. But uh, but it's also not you know totally flat either. It's kind of kind of creeping up. Sustainable growth maybe a little bit, yeah. uh, but not not dropping yet. So where do they make most of their money? Is it from touring? Is it from music purchases? Where does it come from? It's basically all touring. Um, even you know with the streaming revolution, uh, you know like most of these guys aren't getting a ton of money from that or even you know a ton of spins compared to some of the rappers uh, and rock stars out there, uh, pop stars. You know, it's a, a lot of this stuff is, you know, it's, it's kind of niche. Um, some of the people have big hits, like the Chainsmokers are a notable exception, mm -hmm. Calvin Harris, but you know, you don't hear a ton of Marshmello on the radio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Marshmello is another interesting name. Number eight, you're in $21 million. And nobody actually really knows who he is. There's some theories out there, but he performs in this giant marshmallow mask and uh, you know goes out and you know makes uh, six figures a night. So that's that's the name of the game for DJs. Go out there, hit the clubs, um, you know, make a bunch of money in performance fees, and you don't really have to bring you know anything more than a thumb drive and a laptop. Uh, there's no backup dancers. There's no you know trucks full of equipment like uh, like a big rock or pop uh, show. So they get to keep a lot more of uh, of, of what they're. In. The production costs are much lower. Exactly. So theoretically, he could just take off his his helmet and go party the rest of the night and no one would know, right? And no one would know. I mean, yeah, there, there, there are some theories, but, uh, you know, I, I think he hasn't been definitively proved uh, to be anybody in particular. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, good for him, right? <laughs> so do you think, so Calvin Harris has been on the top for how many years now? This is the fifth consecutive year. We've done the list six years. The only other act who's been number one is Tiesto, who was okay. up there the first year. He's been in the top three every year. Um, but, um, you know, the, one of the things about the list, unfortunately, not a very diverse list. Uh, everybody on the list, all ten of them, are men uh, from America or Northern Europe. So, you know, looking for maybe in the next couple of years, get a little more diversity in there, maybe some female DJs and uh, somebody from outside of, of that very narrow realm of the, of the world. Absolutely. Well, we'll keep watching and see if Calvin makes it again Very good. to the top next year. Thank <laughs> you right. for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this week. Tweet your feedback to us using hashtag ForbesFlash, and we'll see you next week. Tune in every Friday morning, same time, same place.